Hello my lovely bookish friends. Welcome back to my channel. It is Mike here once again. Today is, what's today? It's, well, it's August the 1st, which is lovely. I can't believe we're in the eighth month already. Um, and I'm going to be recording today my wrap up. Oh, I nearly got that wrong. My wrap up for July. Uh, I have decided though this month to have a bit more control about when my videos are um, being, uh, What's the word? Not 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 uploaded because I scheduled them. That's right. That's the word scheduled. So I'm scheduling my videos from now on to be on hopefully on a Wednesday and a Sunday every week because last month I recorded and uploaded so many videos. There must be about fourteen or fifteen videos last month, and that just seems like a lot, a mental amount. I know I was on a holiday for a bit so I recorded a couple of different videos for a change but moving forward this month August the plan is Wednesday and Sunday you will get a video from me and then if this format works for this month I may continue it through into September but we shall see I cannot believe I just said September how are we in September we're not in September we're in August but how is this happening 2018 is just flashing away anyway I digress so this month I have read a few books July. It was quite successful and I thoroughly enjoyed them as per usual. But let's just talk about what I read this month. The first book I read was The Whitby Witches by Robin Jarvis. This is A Warlock in Whitby. This is book two of three uh, in the series. And this one is about... It's about Ben and Jeanette and they are foster kids and they live with Aunt Alice in Whitby and she is the resident witch of Whitby and she's there to protect Whitby from all the forces of darkness that seem to be surrounding the town, which there seems to be a lot. And this book sees a warlock called Nathaniel Crozier come to the town um, because his wife came to the town in the last book and didn't fare so well. So he has come looking for revenge on his, for the um, untimely demise of his wife, Rowena. And Nathaniel Crozier is quite, um, quite a good villain actually in this book. He comes into the town and he sort of takes over different parts and he sends Aunt Alice on a wild goose chase and um, the kids are kind of left to fend for themselves. And I think that um, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy my reading experience of it. I think the only criticism I would have for me personally, I would have liked a bit more. I could have coped with this book being longer. I could have coped with um, seeing a bit more from each of the characters' perspectives because it felt like you were with Nathaniel Crozier for quite a lot of time. And that, that's a bad thing because he was quite a, an engaging villain and being with him and then seeing his plan and his plot sort of unfold through the course of the book was quite interesting. But Aunt Alice is absent for quite a lot of the book and that was by design. But I missed her and I think that I, I, w I would have liked to have seen more of her, whether that be more of them as uh, more of kind of Aunt Alice and Ben and Jeanette at the beginning, perhaps in a bit more of a uh, domestic sort of situation, uh, with their, their, which there is, but perhaps just a bit more of it. Um, I did, I did enjoy Jeanette's uh, plot in this book though, because she sort of gets pulled into Nathaniel's plan and um, I, I liked that and, and it was quite interesting and Ben's story, who Ben is my favourite character, he is just brill and he just, I, I really liked him in this book and the climax of the book, I mean no spoilers, but it, it got quite big quite fast and I feel like there was quite a lot of sort of slow build up, this is what um, Robin Jarvis does, he kind of builds you up and then suddenly you're at this massive sort of finale and the finale was massive and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and did not see that part coming um, but at the same time I would have liked more perhaps more characterization perhaps not less time with Nathaniel but more time with the others as much time with the others as we spent with Nathaniel but that's just me but I did actually really enjoy this I think it might be my favorite of all three I think I think but yeah, really liked it. And then the next book I went straight on to was the third volume in the trilogy, The Whitby Child. And this is a creepy thing on the front as well, um, which I know what it is now. Um, so The Whitby Child is the third part in the trilogy. And this time, 
uh, it's a bit thicker, which I liked, and there's, there's a little bit more to it. But this time, there is a coven of witches that come to Whitby to, again, I guess, seek revenge on Nathaniel's demise from book two. And because it's a coven of witches, it suddenly felt much bigger. It wasn't just one um, man and his powers which were formidable, but this time there's a coven of witches which come to Whitby and you do sort of think, well, Aunt Alice has got a lot to deal with now. And after the end of the second novel, this starts with real repercussions about what happened in the second novel. So not only is Aunt Alice having to fight her um, age and she she has a, a stroke at the end of the second book so the, the this book she has to come to terms with that and that was a fascinating story that I didn't expect in a kid's book um, dealing with witches it was very real and I, I really liked that um, you also had Jeanette's consequences from the first second book because she uh, she got sucked into this plot and she was she was kind of in the background of the second book. I would have liked a bit more of her, but um, I, I understand why, because she was sort of involved in another part of the story. And in this book, you really get the ramifications of her involvement in Nathaniel's scheme in the second book. And I like that. I like the idea that there are consequences to things that happened in the first two books and they have these people have to deal with them. Um, it does get a bit wild, this book, because there are these villains that are mentioned throughout the whole series, like the Lords of the Deep and Dark, or the Dark and Deep, I can't remember which way it is. Does it say on the back? It doesn't say, but it's either the Dark and Deep or the Deep and Dark. Um, and they are mentioned a lot, and in this book you get to meet them, which was quite interesting. And they, that was a fascinating little bit. I liked that part of the story, and I really enjoyed in this book as grim as it was, I really liked the story of the off waders and the off waders are the little fisher folk that live in Whitby and they are near enough upon extinction because they've been cursed by the lords of the dark and deep or the deep and dark. And this book really deals with that and we find we are with Nelda um, who is our favourite off, off wader ever and she finds herself pregnant and when you're pregnant as an off wader you are about to die. So that was a really interesting story and actually quite dark for a kid's story again. Um, but Ben's um, relationship with her was brilliant and her sort of, his sort of um, tenacity of having to be there for her and trying to help her was fab. And um, the coven of witches, um, I can't remember any of their names, but they were quite um, villainous and I liked that too. And Jeanette gets a best friend in this book who is more than she seems. And I like that as well. So there's a lot going for this book. I think that if the second book had had this level of um, time given to each character, a little bit more, just a tiny bit more, just for me as an adult reader. I mean, perhaps as a kid reader, you wouldn't you wouldn't miss you this or this or what you wouldn't need what I wanted. But I think that this book, in terms of the characterization and the plot, got it better than the second book. But I think that the second book was quite thrilling to read, and I liked the villain, and I liked how I just I didn't know where it was going. And this book. Um, being the end of a trilogy, you know how the end of the trilogies are, they, they kind of, they're always a li little bit predictable. Not that this was particularly predictable, but you know, you kind of know the feeling of where you're going at the, in the end of a, of a trilogy. And you do feel that in this, or I certainly did, but it actually was a really good read. And I cannot believe it has taken me this long to read The Whitby Witches, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed them and will be reading them Again, you can hear my doorbell because my sister and kids have arrived. So I'm going to go and see them and I'll come back to you later. Bye. Say hi. Hi. Hi guys, I'm back. So that was a, um, an entertaining little break. Um, I'm back. Um, I'm, I'm all out of sorts now. So I've just talked about those two books, I think. I think I finished. I'm just going to go on to the third one. So the next book that I have read this month was... Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'm showing you this lovely blue 20th anniversary edition of the book, which isn't what I've actually read. I actually read, didn't read, I have just got Audible and I um, used my first credit to get the first Harry Potter book. Um, 
to the Philosopher's Stone, read by Stephen Fry. I'm gonna see if I can do something. I've seen people on YouTube like do like magical photos kind of like here. You know, like they just float next to me here and just above my little my finger. I'm gonna see if I can do that. If I can't, then I'm just pointing at nothing for fun. Um, but I listened to The Philosopher's Stone, read by Stephen Fry, and I really enjoyed the experience. I've been feeling sort of a growing urge to go back to Hogwarts recently, and I just couldn't, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to do it, whether I wanted to watch all the films again, read all the books again, whether I wanted to read the illustrated versions of the books, which I do own, so the first three, which are, are out, um, but then I thought I'm only gonna be able to read that like at home because it's a massive hardback and I would only I, I wouldn't want to take it to work in my bag like carrying a big hardback like that that's really like a home book and the 20th anniversary ones are like glorious and beautiful and I want to keep them glorious and beautiful that's just my OCD so I think uh, I'm gonna probably keep that in the house and not take it to work so. I just thought, you know what, everyone does go on about Audible, and I do hear people talking about uh, Stephen, the Stephen Fry read Harry Potter books, and I thought, well, I've never tried it, let's give it a go, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself reading, reading, listening to um, him read The Philosopher's Stone. I think that his Hagrid voice is fantastic. It was just, just how Hagrid should be. Um, uh, a lot of the other voices, you know, he do, he does quite well. I, I, I. It, it's a shame that McGonagall doesn't sound Scottish. Just a little sort of little, little thing. Um, but one of my favourite things he did was the um, Lee Jordan commentating on the Quidditch match. That was fantastic. That felt like suddenly it was elevated because he was saying it all so quickly and it was just um brill it was brill and I, that i really enjoyed that bit um and the the only bit that i i found a little bit like not tricky but the bit that one tiny thing i didn't think was brilliant was that quirrell quirrell's voice sounded very very similar to voldemort's voice and then when they were both speaking it, they were just a little bit too similar, but hopefully that's not that's not the end of the world. It is only one chapter, but you know, it's fine. Um, but I've been really enjoying it. I've been listening to it in the car, listening to it on my headphones, listening to it on my Reva, and um, I even went to bed listening to it the other night, and it was just such a relaxing experience have someone read you a story to go to bed. Uh, I was just so calm and I just listened to maybe maybe half a chapter and then I was like I need to go to bed I'm really sleepy I'm tired I'm falling asleep listening to this and it's joyous and I just felt so relaxed so I'm hopeful hopeful that this is going to be a lovely new obsession of mine with Audible so oh I'm sorry my phone just lit up between my legs um <laughs> yeah so that I'm really enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed I'm going to move swiftly on to the Chamber of Secrets uh, to listen to that as well um I know it's not reading but it is devouring a book, so there we go. And then finally, the last of my wrap-up is a book that I am currently reading, I'm about halfway through. It is another Robin Jarvis book, yes, yes it is. This is The Thorn Ogres of Hagwood. Bit of a strange story to tell behind this book. Um, I obviously don't know where it's, where it's going yet, but I have owned this book for years and years and years and years, and it has sat on my shelf and I have never read it. And I, I am just, in a YA mood at the moment, I just seem to be still in it and thoroughly enjoying it. And all this sort of talk of Robin Jarvis and, and buying Robin Jarvis books and reading Robin Jarvis books, I seem to be in a bit of a Robin Jarvis zone. And I, I just picked this up on a whim because it's quite short and I thought I would, I hoped to finish it before the end of July. But I didn't because I've been listening to Harry Potter. So, you know, I, 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 I'm listening, doing them both at the same time, but they're just taking a little bit longer. And um, I really like it so far. I'm going to talk more about that in my first 100 video, which I'm going to record next. Um, and if I remember, I will link it below. But this is the Thorn Orcus of, um, of Hagrid. It's my currently reading, and it's got a glorious cover. A really lovely drawing. And um, I'm really actually enjoying it and I'm surprised it's taken me so long to get to it. But there we go. So that's what I'm reading now. Um, and that was my wrap up for July. Um, a, a reasonably successful reading month. An introduction to Audible. And um, 
yeah, I enjoyed myself. What, what have you guys been reading? Um, have you read any of those? Or have you listened to the Harry Potter books uh, on Audible? Tell me what you think about them. I would like to hear how you feel about them, what they're like as they get bigger, um, because they do get a lot bigger. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will speak to you all again soon. Bye. Say bye. Bye. I'm stuck.